Hello, I'm Michaela, and this is the Booktube Oldie Tag, which I've seen Ariel Bassett do a couple of days before I filmed this. And I will link the original video down below if I can find it. If not, I'll link Ariel's down below. And the first question is How long have you been part of the Booktube? community. Um, I started booktube about five years ago when I was I was 19 at the time and I was going to turn 20 in the new year and but I have had the YouTube channel for nine years or ten years um, because I started uploading stupid rubbish well before the booktube stuff before I discovered booktube and decided to jump in and try it and question two is what was your biggest misconception for starting booktube and one of them was that you had to have lots of books on your shelf and like a lot of people when you first start you spend a lot of money on books that you're not actually going to get to that you realize later on that you're not actually interested in at all um, and that's a mistake I think a lot of people make and you don't have to have a lot of books on your shelf, you don't have to have read a lot of books at all, you just need to read in general. And the other one is that you have to read a lot consistently to and like and essentially how you have to have to put pressure on yourself to, to like to take part and to read a lot. Um and that isn't the case. You can read two books a month and still make content. Um, so the pressure is unnecessary, big time. And number three is how do you think Booktube has changed since starting? And one of the things is that it's more mainstream now. Uh, you see, I mean there was a few people talking about like about books online five years ago, but there's more and more people now starting than ever like than ever before. Um you know, it's a lot more public speaking and they get Comic Con for like panels and stuff as well. So people are taking a bit more notice now of book bloggers and of YouTube books and things. Um, and you see a lot more sponsorship and merch as well and you get a lot more booktube authors now, which is I think pretty cool as well. Number four is what is your favourite booktube memory and that is John Lenahan. Um he was an author commenting on one of my videos. He wrote the Shadow Magic trilogy and he's a comedian as well. Um I think he's pretty well known in the comedian kind of world. Um but that was pretty cool. I did get excited about that. That was awesome, so that was cool. I have to try and find which video it was. I think I know which one, but I'll try and um, find that and link it below if I can. And what is number five? What kind of books were you introduced to because of Booktube? And to that, I'd say thrillers because I didn't really read thrillers at all before Booktube. Um, when I started Booktube there was some YA, some children's books, now there's thrillers, there's more fantasy in there, like, not even deliberate fantasy, but just fantasy in general, um, because all out epic fantasies aren't the first, like something that I pick up, but it's kind of more splashes of fantasy in there, so, but it still counts. My six is, what is something that frustrates you about YouTube? I've put down three things on my uh, notes for this um, and one of them is when some people are arsy about what people read. Um, I understand the need for diversity when reading. I think it's essential, an essential part of, of the community and it growing um, and it's great to see but People like what they're going to like at the end of the day. Not everybody's going to read as diversely as possible. And the pressure shouldn't necessarily be there. You know, the way that some people 
I go about putting pressure on everybody else, being horrible and being complete assholes about it, I think is unnecessary. Um, because, I mean, I don't always go out looking for diversity in books, whether it's LGBTQ+, plus or own voices. It, I mean, so I just I often just come across them as I'm looking for things to read, like Aristotle and Dante discover the universe. You know, that was just an act, like an accidental like gay read, basically. Um, that wasn't necessarily an intentional thing. Um, I think there was a book called Black Boy or something that I read a while back, which was obviously written by a black author, a black male author. Um, not necessarily an intentional thing, it just it interested us at the time without it being pushed as LGBTQ or own voices, um, which I think is the best way to go about it sometimes. Sometimes I think if things are pushed at you too much, that's when they become unappealing and you don't want to read it and you think, no, I'm not taking part in that because people are absolute freaks and they don't deserve having these books like read. Which of course everything does deserve to be read, but if I think if you can find it by yourself and want to read it, without it being shoved at you, then it's a much better all-round experience. Um, another thing is um, shaming those who use Patreon or sell merch or use affiliate links. I don't think that's a bad thing at all. Um, I have noticed that a lot because things like gamers or people who do makeup, you know, they'll have affiliate links or they'll have their own merch like t-shirts hats or they'll have their own makeup lines then people don't bat an eye like it's an it's a natural progression of makeup and games and things when people are going to do the same with books they're gonna if they can implement like if they can supplement their income even just a little bit by affiliate links or Patreon, I don't really see an issue, if I'm honest. Um, it's no different to anybody else doing it. It's no surprise and it's no big deal. Um, so I don't get why, I don't, I don't understand the criticism of people who do it. To be honest, I don't get it. And the last thing is people hating, uh, not hating so much, but giving grief to some booktubers who have written books just because they've written books um, they don't think it should happen to some people when honestly it's the, the most natural progression of a reader is to eventually write um, I'm not saying everybody is going to do that but there are people who are and you can't really be a very I mean to me you can't be the best writer you could possibly be without having read plenty of books first um, because you're not going to get ideas or, ex or understand experiences without having read things first you need to read plenty first and understand life and understand other things which helps a lot with how you write and how what you think is a good like story or writing technique and finding out how you write um, it's, it's not strange at all you know, it's no different to someone who does makeup and creating a makeup line like Jeffree Star. You know, it's a it's a passion and an interest that can naturally be followed through with other things, so it's not weird. And the last question is, what is your hope for the future of BookTube? And of course, that is for it to grow. Um, it would be nice to see a mix to continue seeing a mix of traditional content and new content that pushes book boundaries online, what you can do with books, how you read, and what books are all about. Um, it would be nice to see more of that, but without grief from a minority of people who think they're better than other people for what they read, for how other people do things online, because none of that shit actually matters at all. Um, 
just hope that people can be more inclusive about what people read, how they read it and everything. And I will link Monica Kim's original video down below for it. And I also tag Lauren Weed and Climb the Stacks. Um, Ashley from Climb the Stacks, should I say. Um, I know Lauren Weed started this about this, like a, a booktube channel about the same time as me, about five years ago. Um, and I know Ashley started a good three or four years before us. So there's going to be a little bit of perspective. And we all read very different things. So the perspective would be pretty cool. And I hope you've enjoyed this video today. And thanks for watching.